Well, hello, my friend. Ah, welcome to Miss Sunshine's story time. I'm Miss Sunshine, and I am here to read you a story. I'm just so happy you're with me right now. I missed you. Would you like a hug? Oh, excellent. <laughs> All right, we have one of my all-time favorite stories today. And if you stick around for after the story, I'm going to tell you a personal story of when I got in trouble at the library one time. But it has to do with this special book, Stella Luna, and one of my favorite books to this day. So I hope you're nice and cozy. Maybe you have your teeth brushed or maybe you're wearing your pajamas or maybe you just woke up. I don't know. Hello. I'm happy to see you anyway. And uh, Roger's happy as well. Mm -hmm. We're going to read Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon to you today. I hope you enjoy it. The day is done. The night is near. How I missed you so, my dear. I'm happy to see you again. Let's read a book or two, my friend. Today we have this book, Stella Luna. It's my favorite. <laughs> Stella Luna. This story was dedicated to Burton H. Cannon and Nancy A. Cannon. This is cute. In a warm and sultry forest far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat with and her new baby. Oh, how mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. Each night, Mother Bat would carry Stella Luna clutched in her breast as she flew out to search for food. One night, as Mother Bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful bird swooped down upon the bats. Dodging and shrieking, Mother Bat tried to escape, but the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and as useless as wet paper. Oh no. Down, down she went faster and faster into the forest below. Mm. Oh man, I hope mom's okay. <sighs> the dark leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One twig was small enough for Stella Luna's tiny feet. Wrapping her wings about her, she clutched the thin branch, trembling cold with cold and trembling with cold and fear. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could no hold on no longer. Down, down, she dropped. Flump! Stella Luna landed headfirst in a soft downy nest, staring or startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below it. She listened to the babble of the three birds. What was that? cried Flap. Oh, I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirped Flitter. Shh, here comes Mama. 
Hissed Pip. Oh, they're cute. <clears throat> many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella was terribly hungry, but not for that those crawly things that Mama Bird brought. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest and she closed her eyes and opened her mouth. Plop dropped in a big green grasshopper. My belly's grumbling. I must want that grasshopper. Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept all night. Do bats stay awake all day? Her, she even uh, ate bugs, even though they tasted awful, and her bat ways were quickly disappearing. Except for one thing, Stella Luna still liked to sleep, hanging by her feet. Once, when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. When Mama Bird came home, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. <clears throat> Eek! she cried. Get back up here this instant. You're going to fall and break your necks. Uh-oh, Mama's not happy. That's dangerous for the birds. Do birds hang upside down? So she comes back, she has a, a fright, she's scared. Oh, when I was little, this pinch scared me. But also it was really cute because Stella's face, so you gotta look at Stella Luna's face in this page. The birds clambered back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You are teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest unless you promise to obey all the rules of this house. Hmm. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night and she didn't hang by her feet. Stella Luna behaved as a good bird should. Oh my goodness, look at her little face broke my heart. Oh my goodness. But this mom is protecting her babies because if they fall out of the nest, they might get really hurt. They probably would. So she's, that's her job is to protect them. <clears throat> All the babies grew so quickly and soon the nest was crowded. Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, and Flap. And Selena jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. Wow, look at that. It's so pretty. Oh, amazing. Pip, Flitter, and Flap landed gra gracefully on a branch. Well, Stella Luna tried to do the same. That's pretty tricky. How embarrassing. <laughs> this, this one right here, she's just like, uh, uh. struggling a little bit. This picture is so cute to me. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself. Mm, then no one will see how clumsy I am. I'll fly all day so no one can see how clumsy I am, she thought. That's a great idea. Can't stop, won't stop. 
The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Celaluna went flying far from home. They flew for hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warns Flitter. We had better go home or we'll get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown so far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went back home without her. Oh, she is living. Wow. Like, Bye, Stella Luna. All alone, Stella flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. Aw, I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed. So she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the sound of soft wings coming near. Something's coming. Is it an owl? Is it an owl? I don't know. It's pretty, the sunset. <clears throat> hey, a loud voice said. Why are you hanging upside down? So Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw the most peculiar face. Well, I'm not upside down. You are, so Luna said. Ah, but you're a bat, and bats hang by their feet. And you're hanging by your thumb, so that makes you upside down, the creature said. I'm a bat, and I'm hanging by my feet, and that makes me right side up. So Luna was confused. Hmm, Mama Bird told me that I was upside down. Oh, she said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe, but not for a bat. <clears throat> More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. You ate b bugs, stuttered one. You slept at night? gasped another. How very strange, they all mur murmured. Wait, wait, let me look at this child. A bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you? She asked, sniffing Stella Luna's fur. She whispered, you are my Stella Luna. You, you are my baby. Oh, it makes me feel so good. I just need to hug Roger. Ah. You escaped the owl? Cried Stella Luna. You survived? Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. And you'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. Oh, uh, I told you this is a good book, friends. I'm just saying. But it's night time, squeaked Stella Luna. Or Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark or we'll crash in the trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in the darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid. But she let go of the tree, and she dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. Oh, I like the stars, so she can see. <clears throat> Soon the bats found a mango tree and Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could hold. I'll never eat another bug again as long as I live, cheered Stella Luna as she stuffed her face full. I must tell Pip 
flitter and flap. Mm, 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 mm. Mango, huh? You like mango? I think Miss Courtney's a bat because I like mango. But I definitely don't stay up at night. I fall asleep early. Come on. Let's be real. Soon the bats found a mango tree and Stella Luna ate as much as the fruit as she can hold. Wait, I just read that page. I forgot to turn the page. Silly. You ever do that? Silly Miss Sunshine. Okay. <clears throat> the next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet, and they fly at night, and they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained to the other birds on the way. As the birds flew among the bats, Pip, or Flap said, well, I feel upside down here. So the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We will fly at night. We're going to fly at night. Can birds fly at night? No. They're not, not all birds are nocturnal. Some are, but not all of them. Owls are nocturnal. But these types of birds are, are not nocturnal. They are awake during the day. When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap leapt from the tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, howled Flitter. Ay! cried Flap. They're going to crash, Stella gasped, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped down, or swooped about, grabbing her friends from the air. She lifted them into a tree, and the birds grasped a branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. Um, safely, she rescued them, but they are not really able to, to fly at night. They can't see. We're, we're safe, said Stella Luna, and then she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark, too. Well, I wish you could land on your feet, Flitter replied, and Pip and Flap nodded. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we all be so different, but feel so much alike, mused Flitter. And how do we feel so different and be so much alike, wondered Pip. I think it's a quite a mystery, said Flap. I agree, said Stella Luna, but we're friends, and that's a fact. Oh. Oh. <laughs> The end. No, I don't want it to be over, but it is. And then at the end, it talks about how bats actually have fingers. Did you realize that each one of these are a finger? This is the thumb, pointer, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. Isn't that insane? Can you see it? So it talks about how our hands is like they have hands too. Their wings. Just has all these fun facts like how there's a hundred and seventy species of fruit bats of fruit bats just the fruit ones hmm i just i it's so amazing so cool and then right back here oh there's a mango I love going all the way through the book and seeing any hidden things. And then here's the author, Janelle, and with her kitty cat. Oh, it's cute. Well, the end. Now it's time for a story. If you want to stick around, feel free. But if not, I love you. Sweet dreams or have a great day. Um... So when Miss Courtney was really little, I had a hard time following directions and <clears throat> taking turns and listening, all the things, sitting still, you name it, I had trouble with it. So we got to go to the library for the first time 
in third grade, I remember it was in third grade and uh, this was a new school. So I was super excited to see their library. And we had to talk about how library time is a time to go and pick out a book um, to take home. And sometimes the librarian will read to us and we have to be very respectful and quiet during story time. Being quiet for me was kind of difficult. So just keep that in mind. So we're heading to the library and my teacher touches base with me and she says, hey, Courtney, just remember to sit on your bottom and to, to raise your hand if you wanna say something. I'm like, okay, no problem. <clears throat> so we get in the library and Mrs. Leak was a librarian at the time. And she kind of gave us a tour of the library and then showed us this area that we read together. So we all sat down on the carpet and she pulled out this book, Stella Luna. And I just about squealed. I think I did. And that's where it started. We went, oh, I love that book. And I yelled it. And then she was just like, oh, Courtney, uh-oh. Remember, I, I don't know if she knew my name yet, but she's like, uh-oh, friend, we're in the library. We're going to read a story and you're going to listen very quietly, okay? I'm like, okay. So she starts with the book and she's like, so this is Stella Luna and this is a story about a little, and I was like, bat, it's about a bat. And she's like, I was like, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, okay, yeah, no problem. And so she starts reading the book and I'm like, ooh, and she's like, and she's showing the pages. I just love this book, I fell in love. And then this page happens with the owl coming down. And I was like, oh no, you know, she was like, Courtney, if, if we're noisy during story time, I have to excuse you from the group and you have to go back to class. I'm like, she's like, so I'm going to need you to sit quietly for the rest of the story. Okay. I'm like, I will. She says, if you get sent out of the library early, you won't have a turn to pick a story and take it home today. So I hope. You can sit nicely for the story. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to sit so good so I could take, so I can get a book and take it home and show my mom. So then we're still reading. I get to this page and I go, Ugh. that is so gross. And she's just like, okay, Courtney, this is your last warning. If you interrupt again, I'm gonna have to send you back to class. Oh no, don't. Uh, she's like, please. Okay, okay. And then this page happened. And I go, oh no, she looks so sad. And Mrs. Lake was like, all right, Courtney, I'm gonna need you to leave the library, please. I'm like, what? No, no. But she's like, yes, you keep interrupting the story and I need to read to our friends. So it's time for you to go back to class, please. Like, but, 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 but if you send me back to class, I won't be able to pick a book. And she's like, I know, I'm sorry, time to go. I was like, but Mrs. Leek, she's like, go. I'm like, ah. So I left the library crying my eyes out. I was heartbroken. I could not control my body that day. I kept interrupting, kept shouting out, kept touching kids next to me, being disruptive, right? So I walked back to class just bawling. And my teacher, Mrs. Myers, was there. And I went into class and she goes, hey, Courtney, <laughs> like she knew. Like she knew I would be sent out of library. And so I went to her and I said, Mrs. Leek said I was being disruptive and I wouldn't stop talking and then I didn't get to read the rest of the book and I don't even get to pick a book to take home and check out from the library <laughs> and I'm crying right and Mrs. Myers was like well I do know Mrs. Leek very well and I know what she likes and I was like what what she's like I know she really likes when people make her notes so maybe if you sit down and you draw her an I'm sorry card and bring it to her and maybe next week you'll be able to check out a book. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. So I'm sitting at, 
at my desk by myself drawing this picture for Mrs. Leek, you know? Like, I really hope she likes it, yeah, yeah, you know? And sometimes when I tell a story, my eyes get a little watery because I remember how sad I felt when I could not sit quietly, you know, and, and, and focus on the book. So I made this card for her. I drew a picture and I wrote, I'm sorry, I ruined the story or something. And uh, during recess time or lunchtime, Miss Myers said I could take it to her. So I took it to her. I saw her leaving the library. I waited outside the library and I saw her leaving and I brought it to her. And I was like, Mrs. Lake, I'm really sorry I ruined the story. <laughs> and she's like, is this, is this a note? And I was like, huh? And she's like, did you make this for me? And I was like, uh-huh, to say I'm sorry. And she's like, I, oh my goodness, I'm totally crying because I remember how sad I was. She was like, I love notes. Let me, let me, just give me a second. Let me read it. Oh my. Oh. Courtney, I think this is the most special note I've ever received. Oh my God really? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? She's like, no, I really, I really love this. Thank you for saying sorry. It's hard to say sorry sometimes. It's like, I am. I'm really sorry. It was my first trip to the library and I ruined it. <laughs> I'm totally crying. And she goes, well, the library is empty right now. And I was like, I know, because no one's allowed in there. And she goes, well, I am the librarian. And I do know of a book I think you would really like. And I was like, I know, maybe I could pick it next week if I'm good. And she goes, or, or you, you and I could go in the library right now and get it. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, I'll let you look at some books and you could check some out if you want. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I hugged her and I like cried on her. <laughs> and we went to the library together and she showed me, um, do you want to see it? This isn't the same book, but um, she. this is the first time I read it. She showed me The Giving Tree, and I, I had never read it before. So I took it home, and I read it, and I read it, and I read it, and I read it, and I fell in love with this book, and I still am in love with this book. And these two books, to this day, are my are some of my favorite books. And at least a couple times a week during lunchtime, I would go check on Mrs. Leek and I would go in the library and give her a hug and she would tell me about a book and I would check it out. And we became really great friends. Sometimes the lessons you got to learn are tough ones, right? Like I did not learn my lesson until I had to walk away and lose my opportunity. But Mrs. Leek was so nice and and was happy to give me another chance. And I still remember how amazing she is. I hope Mrs. Lake is doing good. And Mrs. Myers. Mrs. Myers is one of my favorite teachers of all time. So Mrs. Myers, if you're watching this, I literally love you so much. And you are why I'm just such a happy person. Mrs. Myers is a teacher that helped Miss Courtney really come out of her shawl and sing and dance. And she encouraged me to be myself. And I just love that. So Mrs. Myers, if you're out there, Shout out. I love you so much. You're the best. <laughs> and to all my friends that stuck around for a, a story time, I hope you enjoyed that. I know it was a little long video today, but I just, I love talking to you. So anyway, I'm going to go uh, maybe lay down and snuggle and, and go to sleep because I'm quite tired after after that emotional roller coaster. <laughs> Would you like a hug from Roger and, and me? Okay, come on in. All right, my friends. Well, remember to challenge yourself and to 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 never give up because you know sometimes good things are are gonna come with time. So let's be patient. I'll see you friends soon for another story.